The New Orleans Saints cornerback search gets a little bit more complicated. Michael Thomas named to top 10 wide receivers by ESPN, but how low on the list is the problem? And the New Orleans Saints announce open practices for fans as training camp gets underway. All on today's episode of Locked on Saints. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Saints, your daily New Orleans Saints podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is good, Houdat Nation and Houdat family? Welcome into another episode of Locked On Saints, a daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. On today's episode, we'll start off with some news and notes. Richard Sherman arrested overnight. How does that affect the New Orleans Saints cornerback search? And of course, we'll also take a look at the New Orleans Saints training camp announcement with seven practices open to fans. We'll talk about which practices and give you an update on when training camp gets underway in earnest. Then we'll take a look at Michael Thomas, who is named to ESPN's top 10 wide receiver list, but is he named too low at number eight? We'll talk about why the answer to that is an absolute yes. It is far too low. <laughs> and then we'll wrap up today's episode sticking with the wide receiver theme, taking a look at route combinations that are popular to the NFL that you should know. And of course, those that are popular to the New Orleans Saints, including some that could make a return or have some downfield adjustments in 2021. We've got all that on today's episode. And as always, I'm your host, Ross Jackson at Ross Jackson, NOLA co-managing editor over at CanalStreetChronicles.com and your Tuesday co-host over at the National Locked On NFL podcast. We got all that and a little bit of land yet for you on today's episode of Locked On Saints, your team every day. All right, family, before we get started with today's episode, let me remind you to check out Locked On Fantasy Football with Vinny Iyer so you can make sure that you are ready to dominate your fantasy football leagues. We'll have a couple of fantasy football groups here with Locked On Saints. If you're interested in joining those, and if you're interested in commissioning a couple of leagues, we can have more than one since I'm only really going to be able to do one of them. Uh, let me know so I can go ahead and get those started here as the uh, training camp rolls around. In a bit, we're going to talk about training camp dates for the New Orleans Saints. But before we get to that, let's talk a little bit about something that's a little bit of a sensitive topic here because anytime you talk about somebody getting arrested, it's a little bit sensitive. And especially when it's on charges like what were, what were attached here to Richard Sherman, who was arrested overnight in King County up in Washington. And let's talk a little bit about how this went down and what happened, uh, what we know so far, and how it affects the New Orleans Saints cornerback search. So the first thing that we can start with here is taking a look at what the charges were. So the charge is called burglary domestic violence. And we'll go to our, my good friend, Chris Dunnels, who helps out. Uh, he's got a, an extensive lawyer background and put out on Twitter at Chris Dunnels, D-U-N-N-E-L-L-S, talking a little bit about what these charges mean. So the first tweet here says, burglary essentially means uh, the unlawful entry of property with the intent to commit a felony, which doesn't have to be theft, although it often is. So the allegation here appears to be that, uh, that Sherman uh, unlawfully entered someone's property without permission with the intent to and possibly even committing domestic violence. Now, we did get more information from ESPN, which lists that he didn't actually enter the property. It seemed to be the property of a family member who made the call at about 2 a.m. in the morning and mentioned that it was a family member that didn't live at the property that was trying to break in. And then, of course, after process and booking and everything like that, we now know that that person that was trying to break in was Richard Sherman. Now, Richard Sherman also lives in King County up in Washington, but it doesn't seem that he was locked out of his own home and threatening any type of violence against his home family. But again, we don't know that for sure, right? We have no real indication here. So I'm not here to talk a little to talk about what this means for Richard Sherman or whether or not anything's going to happen with him legally. None of that and ain't ain't a single thing about that in my business. What my business is is how this affects the New Orleans Saints in terms of their potential cornerback uh, uh, search and, and the cornerback search that is continued now. I mentioned very strongly yesterday that I feel like the New Orleans Saints would have signed Richard Sherman already if there wasn't another player that they were interested in or were looking at pursuing or anything like that. That was obviously without prior knowledge of this situation as this situation happened overnight. So I wasn't indicating anything having to do with these charges since they all kind of happened in the moment. But 
I still think that that's true. I still think that there's something else or somebody else out there that's interesting to the New Orleans Saints that's either a free agent or presently on somebody else's team. It could be either one that has kept them from signing Richard Sherman already. Again, $11.6 million is more than enough money to get Richard Sherman signed and would have been more than enough with this. Now, this probably kind of staves some teams off at this point in terms of distancing themselves from Richard Sherman until more information comes out about this case. So we'll learn a little bit more about this. We'll continue to keep you updated here. But as of right now, I still see the New Orleans Saints as potentially being interested elsewhere outside of Richard Sherman, even before this entire situation, but perhaps the situation distances them even further. We'll see. Now, for some lighter news, on Wednesday evening, the New Orleans Saints releasing their training camp schedule and the dates that are going to be open to fans. You can find this on the New Orleans Saints website at neworleansaints.com. But basically, uh, you've got seven practices that are going to be open to fans, not a ton that are open. But remember, they have ended up in the past opening up more over time and as training camp ends up progressing forward. So right now, seven of those dates are open for fans to attend beginning August 30th. But the New Orleans Saints will report the camp with veterans reporting on the 27th. Injured players are reporting a little bit earlier and then camp beginning in earnest for the New Orleans Saints on August 29th, the Thursday, pretty much as we expected, pretty routine for the New Orleans Saints. So do keep that in mind in terms of all of the training camp coverage that will be on your way from the New Orleans Saints media. So a lot of fun stuff on the way there and potentially, you know, some clips here and there that are going to get you hype about some of the players available and that are going to be fighting for spots for the New Orleans Saints. We'll also get a look at some potential tryouts too. Remember that they're allowed tryouts during training camp practices as well. So it'll be interesting to see which positions they continue to focus on and look at. Remember, not every tryout is about signing a player now. Some of it is about making sure that they're updating their files and having an understanding of players that they might potentially need to dip into later on throughout the season. And just one more reminder, we are just a day away from the franchise tag deadline for Marcus Williams to get a long-term deal done or else he'll play 2021 on the franchise tag and become a free agent after the season. So far, Cam Robinson, Allen Robinson over in Chicago, Cam Robinson, of course, with Jacksonville and Marcus May of the New York Jets have all had news break about them saying that they will not receive a long-term deal and that no deal is expected before the deadline. So far, no news, no word on Marcus Williams. Although the New Orleans Saints within 48 hours, I guess, of the deadline tweeted out a nice little photo of Marcus Williams and some nice little moments and things like that. So either they're trying to butter him up or things might be looking better than we know at the moment. So it's one way or another, but either way, we'll know by 4 p.m. New York time tomorrow whether or not Marcus Williams will be a saint for the foreseeable future or for the very foreseeable future. All right, y'all, coming up next, we're going to talk about New Orleans Saints wide receiver Michael Thomas being named the number eight wide receiver on ESPN's top 10 list, why it shouldn't bother you, why it shouldn't deter you from being excited about his 2021 season, and why the narratives around the quarterback change are really, really overblown. We'll talk about all that and much more as we continue on with today's episode of Locked On. Saints. All right, y'all, the NBA finals are back on tonight. So if you want to check out the line, you want to check out the over under everything that's going on in the betting world when it comes to the NBA finals game between the Suns and the Bucks, you might also be able to make a couple of bets just based upon how you're feeling about Willie Green becoming the uh, New Orleans Pelicans next head coach seems to be the direction that's all heading. So you can head over to betonline.ag to check that all out and much more as well around the world of sports and otherwise as they also have Stuff for reality TV, for uh, esports, for television, bunch of stuff going on over there. So go ahead and check them out at betonline.ag. It's free to sign up for your account, but you still have to put down a deposit, of course, in order to be able to bet. But good news, we can help you out there too. As you put down that very first deposit, make sure you use the promo code locked on, L O C K E D O N, so you can get a 50% welcome bonus. That is a 50%. Welcome bonus five zero with the promo code locked on L O C K E D O N at betonline.ag. Bet online, your online sportsbook experts. All right, family, continuing on with today's episode of Locked On Saints and taking a look at Michael Thomas, who was named the number eight wide receiver in ESPN's top 10 list, just one day removed from Alvin Kamara being named the number two running back. I talked about how I thought that that. Placement for Alvin Kamara was fair, considering that the number one placement was a guy that ran for 2,000 yards 
last season. There's only eight players in NFL history ever do that. Funny enough, two of them were Tennessee Titans with uh, Chris Johnson also getting that done. But when it comes down to it, when you look at these guys and you look at the wide receivers across the NFL, I understand the sort of, let's say, wanting to kind of distance themselves from Michael Thomas based on the injury last year. But if you're looking at all things equal and a healthy Michael Thomas going into next season, there's not a lot of reason to really back off of him. And one of the things that a lot of different national analysts continue to do is hedge Michael Thomas based upon the fact that Drew Brees won't be around. But I think that that's a little bit, excuse me, I think that that's very short-sighted. And it's extremely diminishing of Michael Thomas's talent as a wide receiver with and without the future Hall of Famer in Drew Brees. Because let's not forget that in the four games that Taysom Hill and Michael Thomas played together, you had 37 targets from Taysom Hill in that game to Michael Thomas. So he's going to get the targets. You also know, because we talked about it several times here, that Jameis Winston before the 2019 season was noted by Pro Football Focus as targeting outside receivers 43.1% of the time, second most since 2009, despite having only been in the NFL for four years at that time. You also look at the fact that with Taysom Hill over the course of the four games that he played uh, with Michael Thomas, you saw Michael Thomas reel in seven and a half catches as well as 85.8 yards receiving per game in those four games, including a game to where uh, actually two games in which Michael Thomas had 105 and 104 receiving yards against the rival Atlanta Falcons, proving that even though you have a high ankle sprain, you can still be very much on brand and you love to see it. Uh, The other thing about that is that you also had the Denver Broncos game in there with Taysom Hill through for less than 80 yards in that matchup. If that's not enough for you, then look at the year before that with Teddy Bridgewater. Five games with Teddy Bridgewater, you saw him average 8.4 catches per game. And let me make sure I get close when I say this. I'm probably going to get fuzzy, but that's fine. 110.2 yards per game receiving without Drew Brees. So I'm not really concerned about Michael Thomas's production without Drew Brees, especially considering that this is also still a Sean Payton scheme, right? Sean Payton's scheme is perfect for a guy like Michael Thomas, who always wins on the inside breaking routes, who, yes, can play close to the line of scrimmage, but is also a, does a great job with deep, uh, sort of the deep over routes, the deep ins, the deep digs, all the other things that he does that take him into the middle of the field and allow him to compete for a catch. Oh, and not to not to rule out, obviously, his ability to be impeccable when it comes to timing routes on the outside for those outside breaking routes as well to make sure that there are those back shoulder throws, which I think you're going to see a lot of either the back shoulder throws or the throws that are perfectly placed and sort of schemed up to be only where Michael Thomas can catch them. Let's admit easily here that nor Jameis Winston nor uh, Taysom Hill have the ability to be the most accurate passer in the NFL like Drew Brees was. There's no reason to expect that, right? There's no reason to expect that it's going to be exactly the way that it was with Drew Brees. That would just be foolish. However, this scheme still benefits a guy like Michael Thomas and therefore benefits guys like Jameis Winston and Taysom Hill, whichever one of them end up winning the starting role. And let's not forget, too, that Taysom Hill also completed over 70% of his passes over the course of those four games as well, completing 30 of those 37 targets to uh, to Michael Thomas alone. So I just have a bit of a problem with ruling Michael Thomas out this much, dropping him from your number two wide receiver ahead of the 2020 season to the number eight wide receiver. I'm not even going to talk bad about the wide receivers that are ranked above him because it's not their fault. It's not about them. It's about the rankings. The other thing, too, is that like when it comes to top 10 rankings, it's the top three and then it's everybody else because everybody else you can argue should be anywhere between four to 10. And everybody within the top three, you can argue, should be between one and three, and you can argue the order. All that I'm concerned about here is the amount that they've allowed Michael Thomas to drop in their perception. Everyone around the NFL knows who Michael Thomas is. Everyone around the NFL knows what Michael Thomas is and can be without Drew Brees. We've all seen it. It's not just me. I'm not telling you anything that you don't know, and I'm not saying anything that they don't know. So that's where it becomes a little bit kind of shocking to see something like this. The last thing that I'll mention about this is also that just a reminder of who Michael Thomas is in case anyone has forgotten because of the the injury that he suffered last season. Let's not forget here that Michael Thomas broke the record for most receptions in five seasons and in a receiver's first five seasons before being done with his fourth. Let's not forget that that's the guy that we're talking about, the 149 reception 
guy that broke an NFL record just two years ago. Let's not forget the fact that we're also talking about the New Orleans Saints, who have only three triple digit catch seasons by pass catchers in their franchise history. And all three of those are named Michael Thomas. Let's not forget who Michael Thomas is just because he had a high ankle sprain. He had a deltoid injury, some things that led to legitimate offseason surgery that he worked very hard to play through to do everything that he could to make sure that he was around to try to get Drew Brees a ring on his way out. Let's not let a catchless game during a game, uh, during a, a playoff game where the Saints offense just collectively fell apart, if we're being honest. Let's not let that define who Michael Thomas has been. And who will continue to be? I think there's still a lot of reason to be excited about him going into 2021. So don't let a number eight ranking make you feel like that's not true. All right, y'all, coming up next, we're going to stick with the wide receiver talk, take a look at route combinations that you should know for our midweek fundamentals. Got that coming up for you as we continue on with today's episode of Locked on Saints, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. You know what else is absolutely dominant? rockauto.com because they have everything that you need. Just had a battery die in my truck again because of the fact that it's so dang hot outside. <laughs> and so with all of that, I was able to go on the website, pick up a battery for a fraction of the price is what I might pick up from around the corner at the chain store. And it's just going to be delivered to my house. I'll take the old one out, put the new one in, recycle the old one. It's all good. Never have to look at anybody if I don't want to. Never have to wait on somebody to go into the back and tell me that they don't have the part that I'm looking for or the piece that I'm looking for. And I also don't have to pay the outlandish prices that they charge do-it-yourselfers as opposed to the more reasonable prices that they charge the, uh, the, the, the professionals, I guess you could say, the, the wholesale buyers, right? You don't have to worry about all that with rockauto.com. Everybody pays the same exact price. So go ahead and save yourself a little bit of cash, get the things that you need or want for your vehicle that you've been holding off on getting. Go ahead, treat yourself over at rockauto.com. And while you're there, don't forget to let them know that Locked On sent you by writing Locked On in the How'd You Hear About Us section. Amazing selection, reliable low prices, and all the parts your car will ever need at rockauto.com. And while you're treating yourself, you might as well check out builtbar.com as well because it's the best way to treat yourself and also treat yourself right as well. Go ahead and get the protein that you need, but enjoy doing it. Don't be immediately laced with regret based upon your protein bar decisions. Go ahead and make the right decision by heading over to BuiltBar.com and choosing as many of, honestly, the uh, amazing nine incredible flavors that they have. You can get a sample box, get two of all nine flavors, 18 protein bars, or you can also do a build your own box, get all of one, or you can go to a mix of up to three flavors with build your own box as well. So go and check them out and some of those incredible flavors like peanut butter brownie, mint brownie, raspberry, all covered in 100% chocolate as well. Coconut, coconut, almond, salted caramel, great stuff for you to check out over at BuiltBar.com. And of course, don't forget to use the promo code LOCKED15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, so you can get 15% off of your next order over at BuiltBar.com. All right, family, it is midweek fundamental time. We do this every Wednesday during the offseason, making sure that you know the uh, pretty much some of the basics, some of the things that you just need to know about watching the game of football. Today, we're going to talk about the wide receiver position. We're going to talk about route concepts and route combinations. So let me go ahead and bring this up for our visual aid, but we'll also talk through everything, of course, as well. So the first thing we're going to start off here with is four verticals. You'll hear this in the New Orleans Saints offense called all go special. And there's all different types of four vertical combinations and all different types of combinations when it comes to all go specials as well. But basically, you're looking at a two by two formation, which means having two receivers on two pass catchers on one side and two pass catchers on the other side. The Saints tend to do this out of 11 personnel, which remember, 1-1 one, one are the two numbers there, 11. So you're talking about one tight end and one running back when it comes to those personnel packages. So they tend to do this with three receivers on the field, the two outside receivers over on the weak side, i.e. the side opposite the tight end, running just streaks down the field. Oftentimes, you might see maybe that seam or the slot wide receiver run something that kind of moves further into the middle of the field. It's a little bit more of a fade, kind of working at an angle. You can kind of see that if you're if you're watching on YouTube, you can kind of see that in the diagram here as well. And then you'll see something similar over on the right side or the weak side, where or excuse me, or the strong side where you have the tight end who's going to be running a seam route and then you have the uh, nine route coming on the outside. Sometimes you'll also have those outside receivers come back or break in certain things that you can do to kind of mix all this up. And there's also a variety of what you can do with the running back as well. They can kind of pierce through the line of scrimmage and then run a bit of a curl route. They can go out into the flat. They can run an angle route and kind of 
start their way out like they're going to the flat, but then attack the middle of the field, which is a really good piece of combination, like a really good complementary piece to these particular routes that are being run. So there's a lot of different ways to attack here. Here, you're looking at attacking and cover two, one of the seam routes, cover four, whichever way one of those safeties kind of bites, cover one, pick your poison. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to win here. There's also a lot of different ways to lose here. I mean, cover four, you're probably going to either the seams quickly or you're going to the running back, for instance, out of the backfield. So a couple of different ways that you can go, but you see the Saints run this all the time. Third, you know, they could be on their 30 or they could be on the opponent's 30 looking right down at the end zone and run this exact thing and try to attack the seams oftentimes for the touchdown. All right, let's go to a dagger route next. So we're going to focus mostly on the two receivers side. In this case, it is the uh, obviously the side opposite the uh, tight end again. And basically what you're going to see is the inside guy or the slot receiver run a vertical route. And then you're going to see some type of inside breaking route, generally either a deep over route or a deep dig route, sometimes just an in for six or seven yards from the outside receiver. This is also really popular in the Saints defense. This is oftentimes uh, combined over on the opposite side with some type of a drive route. Or if you play Madden, think a little bit more like a drag route uh, that kind of comes over the middle of the field closer to the line of scrimmage so that you get a deep attack for the vertical route. You get a mid-level attack with the inside breaking route from the outside receiver. And then you have that short area attack from the drag or drive that's coming over the middle of the field just behind the defensive line. Next, we'll look at deep crosses or high-low crosses. This is a combination of having uh, a couple of routes here that attack all levels of the field and then bringing one toward the opposite side and going against the grain. So what you're seeing here is that you have all of these different crossing routes that are coming. You have one receiver running by over on one side and then three on the opposite side, three pass catchers. So you're looking at a three by one formation here. You bring the one guy that's all by himself across the field from the, let's say the left to the right. And then if you have the three receivers on the right side, you're bringing all of them from right to left. So you're just working against the grain and trying to open up that single receiver. But then you're also looking at your keys so that you can attack, again, either the short, middle, or deep area of the field. This is where you saw a bit of a change from Drew Brees into, let's say, uh, Jameis Winston over the course of training camp last year, to where Jameis Winston was a little bit more willing to go to the deeper routes, the deep or intermediate routes, while Drew Brees stayed a little bit closer to the line of scrimmage. This is where you could, this is an easy indication of where you could see some potential changes in the offense over the course of what we've seen over the last few years. You can even look at Drew Brees back in 2016, who was a bit more willing to attack that deep over route as opposed to any of the crossing routes down closer to the line of scrimmage here over the most recent years. Um, we'll look at the sail route next, which is basically a combination that literally makes, makes a bit of a sail. You have an outside breaking route from the inside and you have a vertical route on the outside. This is basically the opposite of the dagger route in simple terms, right? So you have a vertical route being run by the wide receiver, let's say, and let's say you have a tight end that's lined up in line that's usually running a seven or a corner route. You saw this from Jared Cook quite a bit last season. You'll see this continue, I think, in the Saints uh, defense, or excuse me, in the Saints offense. And then finally, we'll go here to one of the most popular concepts, the Yankee concept, essentially a two-man route effectively. You have one receiver on one side, one receiver on the other side. You're keeping seven back to protect. And then you might have a little bit of a uh, block and bail or a little bit of a chip and go from any of those guys that are in the uh, backfield. Oftentimes, the company with a play action, if you want to see this play, you can basically find it pretty easily with the second Atlanta Falcons game, uh, Taysom Hill's touchdown throw to Traquan Smith. Um, basically, you've got two deep crossers that are coming across the, the, the deep part of the field. You pick your poison based upon where the uh, safeties or defensive backs play. The defensive backs were getting torn up all game already by Michael Thomas. So a lot of them shifted with Michael Thomas. And then so crossing from right to left, you had Traquan Smith open up wide open down the field. This is very common in the Saints offense as well. So all right, y'all, that is our quick rundown of five uh, route combinations that you need to know before the 2021 season. Have some fun. Go and check out Game Pass. Take a look and see if you can find any of those route combinations. It's a lot of fun. To take a look at all of those. I'll post a link to the article as well for Bleacher Report that uh, created all of those images in the podcast description so that after listening to the episode, or if you want to go back and listen to the segment again and uh, kind of flip through, they have some more details and go into a little bit more 
uh, detailed than what I can do in seven minutes uh, over on the Bleacher Report article as well. Y'all coming up tomorrow, it is Thursday. We're going to forego top three Thursday because it's a big day. Will Marcus Williams get his extension or not? We'll talk a little bit about what we're hearing at that point, and we'll also dig into why Marcus Williams is so important to this defense. So we'll talk about all of that and then also circle back around to all of it on Friday with our In Case You Missed It segment as we close out five days a week here at Locked On Saints. And don't forget to also check out five days a week, the Locked On Today podcast hosted by Peter Bukowski so you know what's going on all around the world of sports. As always, y'all, I appreciate you being here for all of your support. Make sure that you like, subscribe, turn on notifications over on YouTube. If you listen on the podcast, make sure that you're following or subscribe, depending on wherever you're, you're listening. And don't forget to drop that five-star rating and review as well. I appreciate y'all so much, and I'll be back with you tomorrow. As always, y'all, you can find me on Twitter at Ross Jackson, N-O-L-A. Hit me up. Let me know how the family's doing. Let me know how you're living. Let me know how your mom and them and trust you, that nation. I'll holla at you.